Welcome to a look at the genus Daphne, a group of shrubs that are extremely rewarding. We look at plants in their order of bloom during the spring of 1999 on Long Island. Their bloom time and order of bloom may vary for you depending on your location and microclimate. Daphne Yezuensis is unusual. It is rarely seen in cultivation. It is unusual because of its summer deciduous habits. Fresh leaves grow in autumn and before flowering, then fall off in late spring. It is difficult to grow and propagate. Propagators are currently grafting Yezuensis to increase plant material. Daphne odora is named for its legendary fragrance. It is a tender plant that is hardy in zone 7 to 9 only. Growers maintain it in a pot, as a pot plant in greenhouses or in sheltered areas. Odora has been cultivated in its native China since 960 AD. Growers should pinch Odora back to encourage a bushier plant. Many Daphnes benefit from being pinched back, contrary to some literary references. Daphne Missourium is one of the earliest flowering deciduous Daphnes. It is also among the first Daphnes appearing in cultivation. It was grown as early as 1561. It prefers moist habitats and will benefit from some shade. Missourium thrives with some feeding as do most Daphnes. Daphnes perform better with a sensible application of balanced fertilizer and a side dressing of leaf mold. Daphne odora oreo marginata is hardier than many of the species, and growers report success in overwintering the plant in the ground in zone 6. A protective microclimate should help. Odora oreo marginata is also grown indoors as a potted plant by those who enjoy its scent. It's certainly worth the effort. There are a number of other variegated forms of the species that need to be tested for hardiness. Daphne caucasica summer ice is a variegated sport that was found in Oregon. The variegation is a very attractive feature that should make the plant very popular with growers as it becomes more widely available. It should be hardy in zones 5 to 8 and may take even more cold. Daphne Missourium alba is the white flowered form of the species. It blooms a little later than the species with nice, clear, bright white flowers. Hardiness may include zone 4, certainly zones 5 to 7. Daphne colina is a small growing Daphne reaching about 18 by 18 inches in 7 to 10 years. It is a beautiful and useful evergreen with dark green foliage. Colina is a fine decorative plant in the front of a border or in a trough. It is unfortunately not as hardy as some, surviving in zones 7 to 9 and occasionally in zone 6 with protection. The intensely fragrant flowers are decorative and wonderful to smell. Daphne Ganqua, the hackenberry form, was first grown by Don Hackenberry from seed collected in China. It is a very vigorous and upright growing clump. Most forms of Ganqua are hardy in zones 4 to 7. Daphne retusa 
is one of the most beautiful Daphnes, whether in flower or not. This Chinese native, small, slow-growing, yet long-lived gem, is for a carefully selected location in the garden or a trough. Retusa has attractive dark green shiny foliage and is very fragrant. Growing it in more sun will produce a more compact plant, though Retusa is very forgiving. Daphne Lawrence Crocker is found in the garden of Lawrence Crocker, one of the founders of the Siskiyou Rare Plant Nursery. It is like an enlarged version of Daphne Abrilaskula, one of its parents. The other parent is Daphne Colina. Daphne Lawrence Crocker is an evergreen with long, thick, textured leaves. Daphne Genqua is unique in blooming early on bare wood. Its soft lilac flowers are quite dramatic on the bare twiggy branches. It's been grown since Robert Fortune collected it from China in 1844. He found it growing in a garden at a nursery. Later E.H. Wilson found it growing in limestone cliffs and described Genqua as looking like a two foot tall lilac. Daphne Genqua also has a large flower form of the species. Note that the face of the flower is considerably different from the species. The tube is also longer. This variation is easier to grow than the species and is much more vigorous. It will become more popular and will be widely grown as nurseries increase their stock. Daphne Napolitana has been grown since the 1820s. Its origins are not known. It may be a form of Kalina, but most think that it's a hybrid. Napolitana's fragrant rosy purple flowers are born on a plant that commonly grows to two feet, although it can reach three feet. Like most Daphnes, it seems to perform well in acid or alkaline soils. Provide a moisture retentive, well-drained soil for Napolitana, and all Daphnes. Daphne Neorum ruby glow is probably the most widely grown cultivar of Neorum. The rich pink flowers appear in spring and again in fall. The buds are more intensely colored than a number of other Daphnes and are an attractive feature on their own. Daphne tangutica is another good performer. It is closely related to Daphne retusa and should be treated much the same way. It can reach about four feet tall. Its flowers on old wood in the spring and can reflower on new wood throughout the summer. It sets fruit all summer long. Daphne hybrid Burgwoodii Somerset is one of the surviving crosses between Neorum and Caucasica that author and Albert Burkwood produced. Somerset seems to be the, the best of them. It is faster growing and can reach four feet in five years. Once it is well established, it should be pinched or cut back after flowering to keep it compact.
Daphne Leela Haynes is probably a Neorum cultivar and could be the smallest of them. It spreads only 12 inches in seven years. It is quite floriferous with many pink flowers. The delicate quality of them makes it perfect for a trough or a, or a tiny crevice. This is the form of Daphne caucasica that is widely grown in the eastern United States. It was propagated and distributed by Environmental's nursery in Jim Cross. It is an evergreen, and after a flush of fragrant blooms in the spring, will rebloom intermittently throughout the growing season. We are working to sort out the taxonomy of the plant. The form on the west coast is fully deciduous. Daphne neorum eximia is another popular form of the garland flower. Its prostrate habits keep it under eight inches tall, and it only spreads a few feet in a number of years. Eximia has larger flowers and longer leaves than the species. As with many Daphnes, the plant is very attractive in bud. Daphne hybrid Rosettii is best considered a collector's plant. It results from a wide cross between Laureola subspecies Philippii and Neorum, which are found in two different subsections of the genus. The result is a plant that rarely flowers in cultivation. The plant you are looking at took six years to produce a few flowers. Daphne Neorum pygmaea is a smaller version of the species, all parts being proportionately smaller. It is a sturdy, slow-growing plant. The pygmaea forms were collected at relatively high elevations and are useful in troughs. They also should prove to be hardier. Daphne neorum variegata is a very nice variegated form of the species. The contrasting edge provides additional interest along with the attractive buds and flowers. Daphne neorum pygmaea alba is a very slow-growing flat form of the species. It is white-flowered and floriferous with a much appreciated fragrance. It is hardy in zones five to nine. It is a good trough plant. There are a number of misnamed plants in the trade. Daphne alpina has a neat growing habit and is deciduous with nicely scented flowers. It is very easy to grow. It is not fussy about pH, growing well in alkaline or acidic soil. It is good in a rock garden and is even adaptable in a trough culture. Daphne caucasica variegata is a minor sport of caucasica with really good growth habits, but the variegation is not quite as desirable as the main sport, Samarias. The hardiness of all of these variegated sports of Caucasica has not been tested yet, but they should be hardy in zones five to eight and maybe in colder areas. Daphne hybrid Mantensiana is an attractive cross between Berkwoodii Somerset and Retusa. It is evergreen and has a spring flush of flowers that are wonderfully fragrant. It also seems to have flowers almost all of the time, even in some winter days. It is hardy in zones six to nine.
Daphne Birkwoodii Carol Mackey is probably the most widely grown Daphne, and deservedly so. This sport was found by Carol Mackey in New Jersey in 1962. The soft gold band produces a variegation that appeals to most gardeners. The pinkish white flowers have a lot of substance and seem almost frosted. They are wonderfully fragrant. The woody growth is somewhat weak, and the plants benefit from being cut back. Many great plants have been discovered as sports. This choice plant was first propagated and distributed by the late Don and Hazel Smith, who owned the Watanung Nursery in New Jersey. Daphne Birkwoodii G.K. Argles is another nice variegated sport. It is an upright grower that was brought to the United States by the National Arboretum. It also benefits from pinching. It is currently not widely available. This video was created by the Daphne Society to encourage more gardeners to learn about them and to grow these extremely rewarding plants. The video may be shown for educational purposes. All other rights are reserved. This video was produced by John Bieber, founder and president of the Daphne Society. Most of the plants were photographed in his garden, while a few others were videotaped at Planting Fields Arboretum. Photography, editing, and narration were by David Silber. Research and script are by Daryl Trout.